Cindy, are we ready, man? Yes, I've begun recording. Okay. Do you want to conduct the roll call? We have member Rick Wickencamp. Present. Member Brent Bryant. Present. Member Eric Winger. Present. So you have your quorum. Okay, thank you. So I'd like to call the meeting to order. Um, for the record, Bob Teener uh, cannot be here today. And uh, I'm Rick Wickencamp, Assistant Director of Development Services and I'm Mr. Teener's designee and I'll be chairing this hearing. Also with me today is Brent Bryant, the finance director and Eric Winger, public works director. I will also note that board members can ask questions at any time during this hearing. So the city encourages participation in the public meeting from the residents of Oklahoma City. City Council Chamber is closed and the only alternative to participate in the meeting is by Zoom slash prime.gov. Please listen carefully for the instructions on how to access the meeting and how to request to speak during this hearing. To speak on the matter before this board, citizens and residents were encouraged to place a call no later than 9 o'clock a.m. in advance of the meeting to 405-423-2617 or email Megan, M-E-A-G-A-N dot Armstrong, A-R-M-S-T-R-O-N-G at OKC.gov in advance of the hearing. If you wish to speak, include your name and the reason you would like to speak. For example, whether you're representing the applicant or if you're wanting to protest. If connections are lost, the city will attempt to restore communications for a maximum of 30 minutes. And if the communications cannot be restored, the meeting will reconvene at a certain date and time and place to be determined. If you're disconnected, please try a call again before calling 405-423-2617 or emailing megan.armstrong at okc.gov. Is the policy of the city of Oklahoma City ensure that communications with participants and members of the public with disabilities are as effective as communications with others? Anyone with a disability who requires an accommodation, a modification of policies or procedures, or an auxiliary aid or service in order to participate in this meeting should contact 405-423-2617 as soon as possible, but preferably at least 48 hours in advance of this hearing today. Department will give primary consideration to the choice of auxiliary aid or service requested by the individual with disability. So based upon an investigation, it was determined that Combe Condiff failed to strictly comply with the provisions of the Oklahoma City Municipal Code 2020 relating specifically to the business covered by a license to operate a massage establishment. Combe Condiff's License was revoked based upon the facts and reasons set forth in the letter to her dated February 24, 2021, given notice of revocation and a right to a hearing. Chapter 26-19 of the Oklahoma City Municipal Code 2020, cause for revocation or suspension provides in relevant part as follows. Paragraph one, failure of the licensee or permittee to strictly comply with the provisions of this code relating specifically to the person, business, activity, device, or machine covered by the permit or license. Paragraph two, failure of the licensee or permittee to substantially comply with all provisions of this code for the regulation and maintenance of the public order, welfare, peace, health, or safety. In the letter to Comconda further stated forth the provisions of chapter 28-77 of the Oklahoma City Municipal Code 2020, related to indecent conduct, which provides that paragraph A shall be unlawful for any person conducting a massage to place his or her hand or hands upon, to touch with any part of his or her body, 
to fondle in any manner or to massage a sexual or genital area of any other person. In paragraph D, it shall be unlawful for any person owning, operating, or manage a massage establishment not only to cause, allow, or permit in or about such massage establishment any agent, employee, or any other person under his or her control or supervision to perform such acts prohibited in subsections A, B, or C of this section. So chapter 26-23 of the, of the code uh, sets out the duties of the License Appeals Board. Paragraph I, section A, a hearing. The License Appeal Board shall provide an orderly and fair procedure. The licensee or permittee shall be fully apprised of all the claims against him or her and the evidence to be considered and shall have the opportunity to examine witnesses, inspect documents, and offer evidence and explanation or rebuttal. So with that, I will turn it over to City of Oklahoma City. Uh, I don't know whether Mr. Brummett or uh, Ms. Douglas Talley will uh, pursue, proceed with the city. It will be Dan Brummett. Uh, okay. Sorry. Thank you. Dan Brummett, and I would like to call Megan Armstrong. Megan? Yes, sir. Um, how are you employed? I am the supervisor over the license team for the city of Oklahoma City. Is it your responsibility to um, issue licenses for massage establishments? Yes, sir. I'm going to ask you, do you have the book in front of you of exhibits? Yes. I'd like you to look at it uh, under tab one. And yes, sir. Um, tell us what that is. Well, this is the information that we were given by our uh, the customer um, for King Spa for application for a massage license. And who was the applicant? Uh, Kam Kundif. Okay. If you go to, to uh, tab two and uh, explain what that is. This is the actual license that was issued um, with an expiration date of August 26, 2021. And that was issued to Ms. Condiff? Yes, sir. Okay. If we look at uh, tab three and ask if you can identify that. This is the recommendation uh, for revocation for uh, King Spa from the Oklahoma City Police Department. And if you look under the boxes for license revocation reasons, there are two that are checked. Would you read those, please? Uh, the first one, uh, number one, failure of the licensee or permittee to strictly comply with the provisions of the municipal code or other laws relating specifically to the person, business, activity, device, or machine covered by the permit or licensee. Number two, Failure of the licensee or permit, permittee to substantially comply with all provisions of the municipal code for the regulation and maintenance of the public order, welfare, peace, health, or safety. Very well. Is that, is that the reason why you revoked the permit? Yes, sir. I'd like you to turn to tab four. This is an excerpt from the municipal code. If you go down to section 26-9, cause for revocation and or suspension and read one and two under that. Okay, one second, please. Which sections, Dan, I'm sorry. Section down at the bottom, section 26-19, okay. one and two. Cause of a revoc revocation or suspension, sorry. Number one, failure of the licensee or permittee to strictly comply with the provisions of this code relating specifically to the person, business, activity, device, or machine covered by the permit or license. Number two, failure of the licensee or permittee to substantially comply with all provisions of this code 
for the regulation and maintenance of the public order, welfare, peace, health, or safety. And uh, number 26-19-2, that's the reason why you, suspect you revoke the license again, is that correct? Yes, sir. I'm going to ask you to look at under tab six. Is that yes, a photograph of Miss Condu? Yes, sir. And that's who you issued the license to, is that correct? Yes, sir. That's, that's all the questions I have. Uh, Council, it's your witness. I have no questions at this time, but reserve the right later on. Certainly. Um, does the board have any questions? I, I do not. I, I do not have Megan either. Thank you. I do not. Thank you. The next witness that the city will call is Kenneth Wagner. Officer Wagner. Are you there? You may be muted. Hello, Officer Wagner. You may be muted. Dan, I'm not seeing a, a Wagner on the uh, number of people that are all the attendees here. Hmm. Well, we'll go down to Officer High, Terry High, then. He's not on your list either. Hmm? He's not on the list either. Dan, there was a there was a conference room in view earlier that might have been those officers. So I don't know if Cindy can bring them back up or not. It was. West Booth, uh, Wesley Booth is the next witness. There they are. Okay. Good. Do we have all of them, Megan? All three of them. Uh, Lieutenant Kimberlin is not here, but the other three are all in that same room. Okay. Wes, can you guys hear us? We can't hear you. Mr. Wickenkamp, they are unmuted. Okay. Um, I think this would fall under the loss of communication. So I think I'm we need to get see if you can reestablish. I'm gonna try to get a hold of them real quick. now that he doesn't have mm -hmm. his cameras off and his sound is off West Booth. No. Hi. No. 
Mr. Booth, can you try your camera and your voice check? They're trying to fix the audio settings right now. Something was, hang on one second. Mute yourself. They're working on it. Testing. Oh, okay. There we go. Can you hear us? Yeah. Well, turn that off. Turn your phone yeah. off. off or mute it. Now, can they hear you? Yes. Can you guys hear okay. All right. Good deal. All right. This is Kenneth Wegner. Okay. Um, Officer Wagner, how are you employed? I'm a detective with the Oklahoma City Police Department assigned to the Vice Enforcement Unit. Uh, how long have you been assigned to the uh, Vice Enforcement Division? Approximately one year. And are you familiar with an establishment known as the King Spa? Yes. And how did that come to your attention? I entered the business twice in an undercover capacity as part of an ongoing investigation into prostitution allegations. And did you do an investigation of that establishment? Yes. And what were the results of your investigation? The first incident was on August 17th, 2020. At that time, while posing as a customer, an employee named Jean Medina attempted to masturbate me for money and come conduct is actually the one who took my money when I entered the business. The masseuse in question, Jean was wearing lingerie, which is not consistent with the typical massage business. And in addition to the attempted sex act, she also did not have a state massage license. So at that time, Jean Medina was placed under arrest for offering to engage in prostitution and for attempting to massage without a state massage license. The second incident was on January 19th, 2021. Again, I entered the same business and it's located at 1612 Southeast Grand Boulevard in Oklahoma City in Oklahoma County. At that time, again, come conduct, took my money, led me to a massage room. And at that point, a masseuse named Soon Chong, and I apologize if the pronunciation is incorrect, provided a massage and at the end of the massage, she verbally agreed to provide masturbation in exchange for an additional $40 that I gave her. So I gave her $40 and she clarified both verbally and through pointing that she was going to masturbate my penis. At that point, she was placed under arrest for offering to engage in prostitution. She was also found to be in violation of the Massage Therapy Practice Act by not having a state massage license. Good. And uh, what were, what was the, how was that disposed of, those citations? They were actually state charges, and they were filed with the district attorney's office. I don't know where they are as far as the adjudication process now. I haven't been contacted in reference to preliminary hearings or anything. Very good. That's all the questions I have, counsel, your, your witness. Mr. Booth, this is Richard Mildred, and I'm counsel for the applicant. Uh, on the first one, you said it occurred October 17th of 2020. Is that correct? No, it's August 17th of 2020. August, oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. Thank you. And and the, the masturbation, who, uh, who was conducting that activity? It was attempted by the arrested party, Jean Medina, the masseuse in lingerie. Okay. And she was, I, I, I want to make sure I get this correct. She, she was arrested, is that correct? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, do you know what's happened to her? Uh, was she convicted or was it just an arrest? 
I, at this point, as far as I know, it was an arrest. I haven't received any follow-up contact from the district attorney's office pertaining to the court case. I'm not sure. I could look on OSCN if you would like. I'm just trying to find out. Well, I'm just concerned about what's happening up to today. Yes, sir. Uh, and on January 19th of 20, uh, 20, is that correct? Is that a... It's actually 2021. Okay. January 19th of 2021. And it, tell me what happened again. Again, entered the business, come conduct, took my money, led me to a massage room. A Sun Chong provided a massage, at the end of which she agreed to provide masturbation in exchange for $40. Did she, she agree to, did she actually conduct that activity? No, sir. Uh, once the verbal arrangement was made, that's what violated the state statute, therefore the case was made. I'm just, I'm just asking the question of whether she conducted it or not, I guess your answer is no. No, she did not touch my penis. All right, and... and... And uh, the activity uh, with Ms. Conduff, was that just, was she just collecting the money? Is that correct? Correct. The door is locked to go into the business. She greets customers, takes the money, lets them in, checks their temperature, and leads them to a massage room. And obviously, she didn't conduct any, any of the act, actual activity. Is that correct? She did not provide a, a massage, no, sir. I have no further questions. Are there any questions from the board? Chairman, I've got a couple of questions for Officer Wegner. Yes, sir. Uh, officer, on, on the violation that occurred on 817 of 20, um, you mentioned that uh, the masseuse was wearing lingerie, correct? Correct. Um, with, with the wearing of the lingerie, would you um, agree that that was not a fully opaque covering, covering her areas, her genitalia, genitalia areas? I don't recall seeing her genitalia. I just remember it being inconsistent with the typical massage practice. Would you say that the lingerie was not fully opaque? Uh, by opaque, you mean it was not see-through. It was, yep. okay. uh, we have pictures. I don't have the pictures in front of me. So to recount exactly how the lingerie looked, I could. The reason for my questions is I'm just looking specifically at the municipal code and, and just trying to make the, uh, uh, trying to just be sure that I'm reading the code correctly with the report. So I'm just uh, asking those for that purpose. Yes, sir. On, on the second incident on uh, 11921, um, was that masseuse wearing lingerie? No, sir. I don't have any additional questions, thank you. I have no questions, further questions. Okay. Uh, I'd like to call Officer Rivera. Excuse me, I was, I was slow hitting my mute. I did have a question. Sorry. Sorry. No, no, no problem. So, um, Officer Booth, is that correct? Actually, Wagner was the one that was just speaking in reference to Okay, I'm sorry. Officer Wagner, I'm sorry. Um, so, if, if I understood on the on the on the incident on August 17, 2020, you gave your money to Ms. Condiv and then she took you back to the room and there was no further payment. Is that correct? Correct. But then on January 19th of 2021, um, after you got back to the room, you paid an additional $40 for the for the supposed sex act. Is that correct? That is correct. And who did you pay that money to, the extra $40? I paid it to the masseuse, Sun Chong. Okay. Um, and then back on the August 17th incident, and I think Mr. Wanger was asking about this, but is that, is lingerie the normal attire that a, you would encounter in a massage parlor? Is that, is that, is that, is a, is the attire set by a code or statute or is it kind of, a professional standard that's used? It's a professional standard that is used. And also I need to stipulate on the August 17th incident, I'm going over my report now, in addition to offering to provide masturbation, she also offered to provide oral sex. I don't know if that's relevant to this, but I just wanted to make sure that was also. Okay. Um, you know, it's, there's, as far as I know, no state statute associated with 
the attire worn by masseuse. It's just that it's not consistent with what we typically find in a professional massage establishment. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? I have no further questions at this point. Okay, I'd like to call uh, Officer Rivera. Uh, yes, sir, this is Detective Rivera. State your name for the record, please. Investigator Alonzo Rivera. And how are you employed? I'm an investigator with the Oklahoma City Police Department. And how long have you been so employed? Say again. I've been employed with the Oklahoma City Police Department for 18 years. And how long with the vice unit? I've worked in the vice unit for approximately eight years. Currently assigned, currently assigned to another unit. And are you familiar with the establishment, the massage establishment known as King Spa? Yes, sir. And why and how did that come to your attention? Uh, we've conducted several prostitution-related investigations at that establishment. Did you do an investigation of the establishment? Uh, yes, I did. And what were the results of your investigation? Uh, went in to the establishment on September the 6th of 2017 in an undercover capacity. Um, asked for a, I believe it was a one-hour massage made contact with uh, the owner who was the, I guess the host or the recipient of the individuals going into the establishment, uh, Kim Condiff or Kim Condiff, um, paid her $100. Uh, actually, I paid her a $100 bill. She told me it was $60 for a one hour massage. Uh, she led me into the massage room. Uh, once in the room, uh, I just rolled completely and laid down on the massage table. Shortly after I uh, laid down on the table, Miss Condo came back into the room with my change, which was forty dollars, and she placed it on a on a chair in the room. She left. A uh, short time later, another female goes into the room who was later identified as. Last name Brackley, first name Talk. Um, she covered, I was laying face down and she covered my midsection with a towel. Uh, she began massaging my shoulders, my neck area. And while she was massaging me, we just kind of engaged in general conversation, you know, just, you know, just normal conversation. Uh, told me she went by the name of Sunshine and that she was from South Korea. Um, she continued with the massage, massage my back, uh, lower part of my legs. Uh, she left the room briefly, and she came back with a, uh, a towel to wipe off the massage oil. Uh, once she was done wiping off the massage oil, she asked me to flip over onto my back, which I was now facing, uh, facing the ceiling. Um, once I was on my back, she covered my midsection with the towel again. Uh, Continue to massage my shoulders, my neck. Um, I noticed she kind of made her way towards the head of the bed, all of the massage table I was laying on. And as she leaned forward to uh, massage my chest and midsection area, her uh, breasts were basically brushing up against my face. Uh, she continued to massage. Uh, midsection, lower torso area, and then she moved on down to the right side of my thighs and my calves. Uh, moved over to the left side of the table and did the same thing. Uh, while she was massaging, we continued to engage in general conversation. And as she finished up massaging on the left side, she leaned really close to me, uh, face to face, I mean, extremely close. And she asked me if I needed anything else. Mm -hmm. um, I asked her what she meant as far as needing anything else. And then she said if I was good, and I told her I was good. Uh, then she went back down to the foot of the massage table and began massaging my calf muscles again uh, in her thighs. And as she was kind of working along my legs from the calf muscles up into the inner thighs, she started uh, massaging around my genitalia, which was still covered with the towel. Um, 
she slowly removed the towel, exposing my genitals, and she pointed out my penis and said, you like. Um, I told her, told her that I would like. And then she walked over to a table where the massage oils were being kept or sitting on top of, and she put massage oil into her hands. And she made her way back over to the massage table where I was still laying face up. And she actually began blowing air onto my penis with her mouth. Um, and then she reached, she reached over to my penis with both of her hands and touched, touched my penis. Um, i sat up on the bed immediately breaking contact. And uh, shortly after that, other members with the vice unit uh, came in and uh, took Ms. Rackley into custody. Uh, once I was dressed, I placed her under arrest for offering to engage in an act of prostitution. And there were other individuals in the massage uh, parlor at the time, including Ms. Condo. She was still there. There was another customer there, and I believe two other masseuses in the establishment. And what was the disposition of your charges against her? Uh, she pled guilty. I want to say maybe a couple of months later. I want to say the arrest was made in September and in November of 2017, she pled guilty to one act of offering to engage in an act of prostitution. Very good. Uh, I have no further questions, counsel. It's your witness. Uh, officer, let me, let me start off with the last thing. You said she pled guilty? Uh, yes, Ms. Rackley. Uh, R-A-C-K-L-E-Y, first name, talk, T-O-K. All right, and this was for one count of, uh, help me out here, was one count of uh, engaging in activities? Offering to engage in an act of prostitution, yes, sir. And this occurred uh, in 2017? Uh, yes, it did, September the 2nd of 2017. I'm sorry, September the 6th of 2017. Okay. So all of these activities that you have described all occurred in the year 2017. Okay. My incident, yes. My investigation did take place in 2017. Your investigation, all right. And the first part, moving on to the first part of it, you said that she engaged in a massage. Is that correct? Are we referring to Ms. Rackley? Yes. Yes, she was the masseuse uh, during my investigation. And so the only activities you're saying that she may have done something illegal was blowing air on your uh, gentilia? No, she actually uh, touched my penis okay. with her hands. All right. For how long? Say again? For how long did she touch your penis? Probably a second, and I immediately broke contact by sitting up in the massage table. But up to that time, she was doing, giving you a massage of your other parts of your body. Is that correct? That's correct. Excuse me just a second. I have no further questions. Does any of the board, do any of the board members have questions? I do have one question. Detective Rivera, you also mentioned that the masseuse removed the towel from your body, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, thank you. I have no further questions. I don't have a question. I have one more question. What 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 clothes was she was did she have on while conducting the the, the massage? I don't remember the exact attire she was wearing, but it was regular clothes. It wasn't anything provocative or um, lingerie or anything like that. It's just regular clothes. Okay. All right. I have no further questions. We'll call Officer High. Very uh, High. Officer High was not on the witness list. Okay. Officer Booth? Yes, I'm here. Officer Booth, how are you employed? Employed at Oklahoma City Police Department. 
currently in the uh, data systems unit. And how long have you been in that division? I've been in the data systems unit for two years. I've been on the police department for almost 12. Are you familiar with the establishment known as King's Paw? Yes. Uh, what brought that to your attention? Uh, I was doing a 90-day uh, rotation with the vice unit. And it was brought to my attention by another uh, detective that they had tips on this massage parlor. Right. On February 13th of 2018, I entered the massage parlor as a customer that was greeted by uh, Ms. Condiff and she asked if I would like a 30 minute or hour massage. I told her a 30 minute massage. She opened the door for me, led me to a massage room. I gave her a hundred dollar bill and she said she would return with the change and have one of the girls meet me in the room. I completely disrobed in the massage room, laying face down on the table. Yeah. I, I think so. A short time later. That's normal. Yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. Short time later, um, last thing, Choi, she entered the room. She broke, or she spoke broken English. Um, wasn't really much conversation. She started with the massage at my head, worked down my back to my legs, and probably approximately 15 minutes later, she had me roll over to my back. Again, she started with my head and neck area, down my chest, down both of my legs. At the end of the massage, she had stated she was all finished. She stood there beside the massage bed as I waited for her to leave the room. And she continued to stand there as I was waiting for her to leave so I could get dressed. And as she stood there, she asked if it was okay. And she pointed to my midsection, which was still covered by a towel. And I said, yes, it's okay. So she went to a small table and she got um, oil on her hands, came back to the table. And she attempted to use my hand to pull her hand towards my genital area and I pulled my hand away and she asked again if it was okay and I said yes and simultaneously with both hands with her left hand she grabbed my penis with her right hand she touched my scrotum and I immediately broke contact and the investigation officers came in the door and we arrested Joy. Um. Do you know what the results of your charges were? I'm looking at it right now. Pardon me? I'm looking at it right now. Um, she pled guilty to offering to engage in act of prostitution. Okay, that's all I have. Counsel, to witness. Excuse me for just a second. Uh, this occurred in, what, February of 2018? Yes, February 13th. And, and uh, what clothes, what, what were the type of clothes that this uh, uh, person was, was, was wearing? I don't recall the clothing that she was wearing. Okay. Uh, and she first started doing massaging, is that correct? Your, your head, your neck, your chest, and your thighs? Yes. Okay. I mean, later on, is it correct that uh, she, <clears throat> you, you say she attempted to touch your uh, gentilia? She did touch. Okay. And that lasted for how long? Just as soon as skin to skin contact was made, I broke contact and set up. Okay. Excuse me. I'm sorry. And, and so uh, you found out that she uh, was charged with attempted. Uh, and, and pled guilty to that, is that correct? Yes. Were there any other violations that, uh, that she had been charged with? So I think there's a second count of uh, not having a massage license. 
Okay, but she's only had been uh, found guilty of that one charge. Is that correct? Yes. Excuse me for just a second. I have no further questions. Um, do any of the board members have questions? I do not. I do not. I do not. Is um, Lieutenant Kimberlin available? He was on his way back from Anchorage. Right. Um, just one second. Mr. Wickenkamp, I do see someone that has just signed in as a phone call. This is Lieutenant Kimberlin. Okay, proceed. Are we, uh, who's your name? Are you talking to Lieutenant Kimberlin? I'm sorry. Yes, yes, that's Dan Brummett speaking to Lieutenant Kimberlin. Thank uh, you for Lieutenant joining Kimberlin. the call. Lieutenant Doug Kimberlin. How are you, Floyd, sir? Uh, police officer for Oklahoma City. And how long have you been a police officer for the city of Oklahoma City? Uh, 33 years. What are your current duties? My current duties are uh, a supervisor with the Special Operations Division. And uh, Lieutenant Kimberlin, are you familiar with the establishment known as the King's Fall? Yes, sir. And how did you come become familiar with that establishment? Uh, on or about the 24th of August in 2017, uh, we received a uh, tip regarding prostitution that was ongoing. Uh, the tip came through Crime Stoppers, uh, which is a, uh, a form, uh, forum for citizens to call in complaints regarding criminal activity. Uh, that was collected. Uh, and forwarded to our unit. Was there anything else? Uh, we input that that uh, information into uh, our report system and yes. created a tip so we could track it. 
Right. Uh, it was a sign. And, uh, and then a undercover investigation was, was scheduled. Um, do you have a exhibit book in front of you? I do. You look at exhibit number three. Is that your recommendation to for revocation of the permit or license? Yes, it is. And the two boxes that are checked, would you read those, please? A failure of the licensee or permittee to strictly comply with the provisions of the municipal code or other laws relating specifically to the person, business, activity, device, or machine covered by the permit or license, and failure of the licensee or permittee to substantially comply with all provisions of the municipal code for the regulation and maintenance of the public order, welfare, peace, health, or safety. And those, and those are the reasons why the uh, license was, re was revoked, is that correct? Those are the reasons why we requested the revocation hearing, yes, sir. I don't have any further questions for Lieutenant Kimberly. Officer Kim Kimberly, is that correct? That's Kimberlyn. Oh, and I'm sorry. Uh, and you indicated that uh, all of this is based on an incident that occurred on August 24th of 2017? Uh, no, sir. There's uh, several incidents that the request is based on. Okay. So what's my, why do you say that it was, we didn't strictly comply with the provisions of the municipal code? Well, the, uh, the licensee uh, did not hire employees that were licensed by the state to conduct the act of massage. Uh, Oklahoma state law requires that every person who conducts massage in the state of Oklahoma must be bored by the act or must be licensed by the Board of Cosmetology, uh, uh, Barbary, and Massage. And none of the individuals who were arrested that we had contacted through our through our investigations uh, from uh, August of 2017 through uh, January of 2021 uh, were licensed by the state. So she, the licensee continued to hire uh, persons that were not allowed to conduct massage within in the state, uh, and this is, and, and then you have the prostitution issue, uh, which is what caused the arrest in the original complaint, and this is after she received nuisance notices uh, that the activity was ongoing, and and which is inclusive of her actually being at the location when each of these investigations took place. So. So even with her knowledge, she elected not to hire uh, uh, fully trained and licensed employees that were allowed to uh, conduct that type of activity. And as such, she was she was therefore conducting an illegal activity. So the reason why you say that she didn't strictly comply is a license issue. The fact that the, that you claim that they didn't have a license is that correct? Uh, that and she was allowing acts of prostitution to occur upon the premise. And, and that how many uh, how many prostitutions you say she allowed to occur? Did she allow? We made an arrest on uh, nine sixteen of twenty seventeen. She was she was present and provided a notice. We received another tip. Uh, conducted another operation on 2-13 of 2018. She was present at the business. Another employee was arrested. Uh, so both the first and second employees, neither of those were licensed. Uh, another nuisance notice was, uh, was requested, sent and delivered. And then uh, she was also cited for allowing a nuisance to, uh, uh, or failure to abate a nuisance on the property, which is the prostitution. Uh, then we got another tip for prostitution uh, in September of 20, conducted another 
undercover operation uh, where she was present. We arrested another employee who was also not licensed by the state to conduct uh, massage. Uh, that's when I issued citations for allowing a disorderly, the operation of a disorderly house. Uh, then we conducted another UC oper undercover operation, um, conducted two operations, one in September of 20 and one in January of 21. And the one in January of 21, she was again present. Uh, and another employee was arrested who also was not licensed. We generated another nuisance notice. And then subsequent to that, we generated the request of the chief of police to request the nuisance notice. So this has been an ongoing issue since 2017. All right. So you, the, uh, the number one thing you got it for is not having a license and a, a nuisance. Is that correct? Uh, can, I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? Uh, the, the, the things that you've gotten her for that seemed uh, the biggest items were the failure to have a license are being charged with a nuisance, is that correct? As far as the licensee herself, Mr. C Ms. Condit, is that what? Oh, is that that, I'm sorry, go ahead. It, so, I, I'm not sure I understand your question. All right, uh, you, you've, you've uh, found her, uh, you've arrested her for her employees not having a license, is that is that correct? We arrested the employees for not having a license and for engaging in an act of prostitution. Okay. Uh, and you also have the nuisance charge, is that correct? The nuisance charge was, uh, was filed against her after she was provided notice that it was uh, present upon the, the premise and then failed to take any, any action to abate that nuisance. I have no further questions. Any questions from the board? I have a question, uh, Officer Kimberlin. So, and, and maybe I just didn't get this, but is the is the nuisance uh, prostitution or is the nuisance allowing massages without a license or is it both? So the, the actual nuisance is the prostitution, the act of prostitution itself. So the the exchange of money that occurred for a quid pro quo of a sexual act, uh, that, that's the actual nuisance. That is a per se nuisance in state law. So that is what allows the city to deem that a nuisance, which is what allows the, the uh, our nuisance abatement unit to issue a nuisance notice uh, subsequent to those prostitution arrests. And those are sent to both the licensee of the business and to the property owners. So both are made aware of what's going on in the business and both have an opportunity to correct that behavior. And then, you know, between those, between those complaints, those tip sheets, uh, we monitored that, tried to monitor that business for a change in behavior uh, and and every, but every time we went in with another another tip sheet or a complaint from a citizen we continued to get the same result okay so after after each arrest of, of a masseuse for uh, prostitution um, uh, and I have I have the dates of September of 17. February of 18, September of 20, and January of 21. After each one of those, uh, Ms. Condiff was given a nuisance um, citation or notice of violation to correct it. Am I understanding that? Yes, sir. So in uh, September of 27 or uh, 2017, uh, she was present when it occurred. And even though she was present, we still provided her with a written notice which is required. And then the one that occurred in February of 2018, again, she was present when the violation occurred and we still provided her another written notice and that generated the fair to abate the nuisance citation issued by the nuisance abatement unit um, because she failed to take action from the previous notice and the notice that had just been issued. 
Then again, um, in September, uh, we issued or we received another tip. Um, and in August of 20, we conducted the UC operation again uh, from the set, from the June tip. Uh, she was present in, uh, when that arrest was made of that employee, and that process again repeated itself. So another nuisance notice uh, was sent, and uh, we issued citations to her uh, after they were reviewed by the city attorney's office for maintaining a disorderly house. Okay, and so ab after, I guess these cumulative things occurred and were never corrected, that, that's what led to ultimately the request for the revocation of the license. Yes, yes sir. So then we, yeah. had, then we had issues with COVID, which kind of interrupted uh, you know, in investigation tempos, which is why there's a lot of delay. Uh, we did some other investigation as well uh, in uh, in January of 21, we did another investigation to see if there was any type of change of behavior uh, or correction of the previous nuisances that we had detected. Uh, and again, we are met, that's when we made the last arrest of the unlicensed employee for prostitution. Again, the licensee was present. Uh, we generated another nuisance notice, and then we also generated the request for this revocation hearing uh, because of that particular arrest in um, in October of 21, because since 2017, we had not seen any change or effort to make any change by the licensee. Okay, thank you. Do board members have any other questions? In that case, uh, we rest. Okay, the city has rested. Um, Mr. Mildren, do you have any additional information you want to present? He's actually not logged in. He's just called. Um, Richard, are you trying to get back in? Whatever he asks, I want you to uh, good response. Okay. We'll see how that goes. You're pretty hard act to follow. Pretty good. Oh, okay, great. Uh, You're much better. That <laughs> camera on showed up. Hey, Rita, you're on. You're you're not on mute. Okay. Then I'll stop saying all those things I was saying about people. Thank you. Mr. Brummett, this is Eric Winger. I do have a, just a question that has come to my mind. Can I ask that now? Sure. Looking at the information that was provided in the packet, there were a couple of references to the state statute versus the city ordinance. Yes. Um, I assume the state statutes apply to the licensing process as well? Yes. Okay. Um, in looking at the city ordinance a little bit closer, I'm looking at the requirements for the, ash, the actual masseuse to require that the masseuse have a license. Is that something that's in the city ordinance or is that better found in the state statute? in the state and the city ordinance also. But the state statute applies regardless. Yes, it does. So masseuses that, that operate, not just the owner, but the actual massage therapist is required to have a license. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Yes, through the state, Eric. Okay. They superseded us a few years ago, so we can no longer license the therapist anymore. Okay, so the state does that. Right. 
Okay, just wanted to make sure. They're trying to get back in. I don't know where they fell out, but I told them, Richard, are you here? We're here. Okay, good. I don't know where you left off, Richard, and what you last heard, so we may have to back up a little bit. Okay, we're, we're trying to start audio or video. I don't know if you had video prior to. Guys, you're live. Cindy, is their video working? Isaac, yeah, we're just about to. Can you hear us okay? There we are. Hey. Hey. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. All right, I have no further questions. Okay. Uh, uh, Say again. I have no further questions of Alter Kimberly. Okay. okay. He was where when I got off. Okay, the city has rested um, its case, and so do you have any additional information or testimony that you want to present to the board? Could we step out of our, my office for about five minutes just to, to talk with our client? I'm not going to touch anything because I don't want to screw it up, but I want just to have a minute or two if that's okay. I think that's appropriate. Any objection from no, city legal? Not at all. I appreciate it very much. We'll be right back. Okay. Let's go in the other room. Cindy, they said five minutes, so I'm going to step away. Um, hopefully, I'll be back before five minutes is up. Okay. Cindy, I'm back.
I'm back, Cindy. Okay, thank you. Hey, Steve. Yes, sir. How do I go from Cindy to get back to where I want to get? Back to where everybody can meet and start talking to me. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, can you all hear us? Yes. Yes. Remember, yes. you're talking to the group in the screen there. Okay. Mr. Wickenkamp, since you, we took a five minute break, it appears that our board members are on the meeting and we're in quorum. Okay, very good. All right. Mr. Mildred, please proceed. This is Richard Mildred, Council. And uh, our, our, the applicant is going to, uh, I'm going to ask her a few questions. And if you need her to ask it, you know, talk again, please let us know. Uh, she's, we'll get closer. So yeah, close. State your name for the record, please. State, tell them who you are. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, my name, Come Condiff. Can you, can you all hear that well? Yes. All right. And are you the owner of the King Spa? Yeah, I own the King Spa. You need to talk slowly because sometimes I have a hard time. Uh, and what were one of your activities as owner of uh, King Spa in terms of educating the staff? How, 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 what, what, what did you do as owner? Oh. I got an and, and tell them what you did. Don't tell me. Tell them what you did. Yeah. I got an operator at the King Spa. And I tell the girl nothing to do. It's just a street and massage. Did you educate the girls? Uh, yeah, they got to do. Did you, did you train the girls? I don't train the girl. Okay. I asked them, you know how to do massage? They say yes. Okay, uh, and what happens if one of the girls, <coughs> excuse me, one of the girls did something improper? What did you do? And uh, I say, I can't give a job. I got a fire. So you fired them, is that correct? Yes. Anything. Is there anything you'd like to tell the board? Hmm. I, I have no further questions. 
to the board members. But I don't have nothing. Do the board members uh, have any questions? Yeah, I just have a question. Um, uh, I think she said, I think she said that they needed a license to, to do the massage. I'm not sure she indicated, she indicated they needed some kind of qualification. Is that correct? I don't understand. What well, that's a, the licensing of the girls. Did that oh. happen? Oh. You need to tell the, the, the gentleman what it. Oh, no, I have a license. Uh, she says she know how to do. That's all. I hired her. Okay, you, you hired her because she said she knew how to do massage. Yes. But you didn't verify whether whether your employees actually had the, the proper license to do massage. I tell girl, no, make it trouble. I think that's correct. So I take that as a no. No, yes. Yes, that's a no. And, and, on, on, and on these uh, these ladies that had the, did these extra things um, to their clients, you had no knowledge of that? Was that it? Did you know what the girls were? Any prostitution occurred? I don't know. So you don't know? Okay. I don't know. There were customer and the girls of the room. I can go inside, sit down. I don't know. Okay. But uh, you were did you receive a, a nuisance uh, notice of a nuisance violation for those acts beginning back in 2017? 2017, um, 2018, 2020, 2021, nuisance uh, notification. Uh -huh. yes. Well, she, she has an answer, sir. Yes. Tell the gentleman. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Did you get your answer? I did. All right. So I have a question. So I have a follow up question to the one that was just asked. So upon receipt of those nuisance violations, what action did you take? Once you got the notice, what did you do? No, I gotta take it to the What? You took it to the lawyers? Uh -huh. Evidently she took it uh, to the lawyers. I was not her counsel at that time. So she did not visit with the employees she did not train or provide any additional information to them once she received the notices? I don't train to the girl. Okay. I don't have any additional questions. That's what it was. Mr. Mildren, do you have anything further? Nothing further. Okay, uh, City Legal, do you have anything further? Yes, this is Rita Talley. And the question I have is for Ms. Condo. Um, you have described that you told the girls not to make trouble. So once you got the notice of violation indicating that there was trouble, that there was a problem, you said that you took the notice of violation to the lawyers. But what did you do at your spa to make sure that the girls were not doing the things that the notice of violation said that they should not? Did you did, did you take any tell her tell her what you did? I, she got a trouble and I fired her. So when the next person did the same thing, did yeah, you they, change anything? They, same about thing. the way that you supervised them. And I fired her though. They got in trouble. So every time a person was arrested, they got fired? Yes. I can't keep it. They got in trouble. First time she come work, I tell her nothing to do with trouble. And so when they got in trouble, you fired them. And then when the next person was hired, what did you do to make sure 
that that next employee would not do the same thing. They say they don't want to come to the work. They don't want a job. They say not make it trouble, right? She come to the work. I don't know what they do in the room. Is there a way that you could monitor what they do so they would not get in trouble? Just a massage. Yes. Yeah. But if they were doing anything other than massage, is there a way that you could monitor them, a way that you could watch what they do what to be sure, I'm to sorry. be sure yeah. that they didn't get in trouble, that they didn't do something you told them not to do? We don't have any camera. So beginning in 2017, the notice of violation was sent to you, correct? The notice, the notice of violation, did you get it? Yeah. All right, she got it. And you got the violation because you're the owner of the spa. Is that correct? Yes. And as owner of the spa, you're responsible for what goes on at the spa, correct? What does that mean? You're in charge at the spa, huh? Yeah. All right. And you take- Yes, I'm charging of the spa. So since you're in charge of the spa, anything that happens there is your responsibility, correct? Who's in charge? I charge. Well, you need to tell, yeah. I charge her. Since you're in charge of it, then it's up to you to make sure that they don't get in trouble. Make, who makes sure they're not in, they don't get in trouble? Yes, and don't make it trouble. I tell her, and uh, the, the, the customer, yeah. customer do tell, tell them what you Okay, come in the massage the customer, and he try to make it her trouble. The and customer? Customer. Do and to change her mind, okay? And also, and the policeman come out there. So you, she wants to know what did you do to someone who had broken, the, you know, maybe had done something wrong. I know the customer changed the girl's mind. That we're not, okay. So did you have any kind of training for your employees? You have meetings with your employees to say, I, I, don't do this. Yeah. Do this, but don't do that. Yes, I train her. Yeah. So what did you tell them to do if a customer said, I want something extra? Yeah. What did you tell them to do? I tell the girls, say no. So then if the customer insists, what are they supposed to do? What is your employee supposed to do if the customer says, oh, come on, I'll give you 50 extra dollars. What are they supposed to do? Just want to tell the girls to know. And the uh, girls, the customer making her change mind, you know? Okay. Well, thank you very much, Ms. Conda. You're welcome. Appreciate your answers. I, I have no further questions. Are there any questions? Uh, yes, this is Detective Rivera with Oklahoma City Police. Um, I was wondering if we were able to make uh, allowed to make comments um, based off of what we're hearing here. Um, it would be rebuttal. Yeah, I, I'd rather. I, I I don't know what you're uh, intending to get here, and I'd rather. I I I don't, I don't know what it, it, it was just an observation. Uh, to one of the answers that Ms. Uh, Condiff answered, and and we just have here we have here in our report. Uh, can, can I can, let me just let me just pause you there because I want to get an opinion here from <laughs> City Legal. Um, so, um, I, I would I would just assume pass, but go ahead. I, it it is a rebuttal, but uh, and. I'm going to call you Officer Rivera. Would you email me, please, the gist of your testimony? It's rita.douglas 
hyphen tally oh, at okc.gov. Let, let me grab a pen real quick. Okay. Okay, what was that email? Rita, R-I-T-A uh -huh. dot Douglas, D-O-U-G-L-A-S hyphen okay. tally, T-A-L-L-E-Y okay. at okc.gov. Okay. And I can review your comment with Mr. Brummett and see whether we need to bring rebuttal testimony. Okay, I will send that here in a bit. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mildred, do you have do you have anything else pending? No, the no sir. No, sir. Okay. Board members, do you have any other questions at this time? Okay. No. We'll give them. We'll give them a minute here. Mr. Wickenkamp? Yes. Do you mind if we take another five minute recess? No, it's okay with me. Thank you. Okay, five minute recess. Well, I there were two or three of the witnesses. I kept saying 217, 217, 217. 27, 27, 27. Yeah, if we come back. Mr. Mildred? Yes, sir. I just want to bring to your attention. You're not muted. So, no, no, no I'm not leaving. We might be able to overhear a conversation that, that you don't want us to hear. Just wanted to bring to your attention. Okay, thank you. I'll shut up. Thank you for helping me. Okay, we're we're back. Thank you. Um, I'd like to ask Ms. Condiff another question if the board will okay. allow. Can you hold just one second? Yes. Cindy, can you can you form firm all the boards present again for quorum since we took a break? Yes, I see Mr. Winger, Dr. Uh, Mr. Bryant and Mr. Wickenkamp, so you have your quorum. Okay, thank you. Go go ahead, Rita. Thank, thank you for checking that. Um, what I wanted to ask Ms. Condiff was about a statement she made before the break. She indicated that if an employee, and I'm just not saying it quite the way she did, but if an employee did not follow her rules, they were fired. Yes. So the follow up question to that is whether or not any of those employees that were fired were rehired. If the, the ones that got fired, mm -hmm. if you rehire them, would they go back to work for you? Yeah. No. Was it no. the other lady? No. What does that mean? So none of the employees that you fired at any time for not following your rules have come back to work there. No. 
Yes. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Bilbrin, do you have anything further? Uh, no, other than, other than I wish the board would grant us our license. Okay, and, and I think you, I, I lost you just slightly. Can you restate? You'd like, you'd like the board to reinstate yeah, the license? You know, I, I, uh, I appreciate the board's attention. And uh, at this time, we think we, uh, it would, the best decision would be to, to uh, grant the application for license uh, to operate and uh, let her be more careful in, in time, maybe of, of where she, you know, should have been a little bit more careful or let her demonstrate that. We think she's worthy of it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, City Legal, do you have anything further? We do not. Okay. So that being the case, uh, the board will make a decision about the, the, uh, the request to uh, overturn the revocation. It's my understanding that this board may either modify affirm or set aside the decision to, to revoke the license. Uh, do we have any discussion from board member concerning this matter? Mr. Chairman, I think, you know, from my observation, the biggest concern that I have, and it includes the responses from the business owner, is that uh, the owner is not practicing the, the checking for licenses before employees are hired, which is a requirement of the state and of the city ordinance. Um, and it seems to be that that has been as current as January of 2021, where employees were arrested for reasons, including not having a license. Um, so at this point, that's my biggest concern is that it doesn't appear to be a method for correcting that. And it seems to be one of the issues that's been ongoing for some time is the continual hiring of, of massage therapists without a license. Mr. Bryant, do you have any comments, discussion? Uh, I'm with Mr. Winger on what he has said. And then the other thing is the consistent pattern of um, improper actions at, at the, at the parlor, or at the, uh, at the uh, location uh, concerns me too. So, uh, and that's about all I have to say. Okay. And, and I would add uh, this comment that, um, you know, this is, has occurred over a period of years and uh, the applicant had received notification that it was occurring and yet, you know, it appears no corrective action was taken or any, anything that was effective to, to stop it. And uh, so, and, those were the those were the prostitution um, nuisances. So she was informed um, multiple times about those. So with that, uh, I'll entertain a motion to either uh, affirm, set aside, or modify the revocation of the license. I'll make the motion to affirm the revocation. And I second, and, and the second comes with, it's a violation of chapter 28 of the Oklahoma Municipal Code, 28-77 section D is where I'm referencing that as the owner knowingly not providing for licenses for massage therapists. Okay, we have a motion and a second to affirm the revocation. Because we're on a Zoom, we're, we're gonna do a, a vote by voice. Um, if you're in favor of this motion, I guess I as the, as the proper Language, Mr. Bryant, how do you vote? Uh, aye. Mr. Winger? Aye. Chairman also votes aye for uh, affirming the revocation. Um, so chapter 2623, duty of the license appeals board uh, specifies that the board's decision in modifying, affirming, or setting aside the revocation or suspension will be made in writing to the licensee or permittee a copy of the decision shall also be maintained by the city clerk and a copy will be given to the supervisor of the licenses. Um, does anyone have anything else? No, sir. 
Okay, so with that, uh, this hearing is concluded. Thank you all for, uh, for participating in your help. Thank you. Thank you. I'm turning it off here. Finished? We're finished. Yes, sir, we have the uh, in point now. Nice to it.